Hi, what's up? We're in the next part. I was actually pressed to pee. So I just come from a bathroom break. Anyway, yeah. Another thing, I was talking about um, how it is that when you find a child of God that is faithful with the scriptures in these last days where there's so much deception running around, hold on to them uh, and like stop hurting them. We need as much support as we can get, especially considering there's so much persecution of the church on the ground. I also was speaking about Prophet Lovi and what is the reason that I left him. It's because he was doctrinally off and um, there were also certain practices in his ministry that I did not quite agree with. Like, for instance, the fact that he charges tickets for these crusades that he does. Um, people have to buy tickets to go there. Whereas Jesus, crowds just gathered around him and then he provided for them 4,000, 5,000 and cetera. Uh, I just have this mindset that people who give collection basket donations at these meetings, like church collection during the time when they're giving money that's more than enough to pay you uh even your for your flight ticket and then some so you don't need to charge them because the the, the gospel is for the broken the barren the debilitated the the moneyless and so if a person needs like deliverance they should not have to pay um to get it you know what i mean if at all the profit is in your town you should be able to go to where like you know how christ that woman reached in between the crowds and touched his garments and then power left christ and the lord was like power has left me and that woman got healed and then the lord was like woman your faith has healed you Christ, like people should be able to squeeze themselves just to see the prophet do you understand uh insofar as the there is crowd control and we're not going to be dealing with the soul crushing or the stampede then by all means people should be able to come in just make sure that crowd control is like a whole thing for the safety of people and those that have money to give will give like people when they are inspired by the move of god can give two hundred dollars three hundred dollars five hundred dollars a thousand dollars just there on the spot more than enough to play pay for your flight ticket your your, um, hotel expenses your uh, and your salary and then some so I just have like a thing about that but you know the thing about the Holy Spirit God says that the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are without repentance meaning that once you have the gift you have the gift you have the gift so it's not gonna be taken away from you even though you are misusing it type thing and you are essentially exploiting people for it so a lot of these people are going to have to account to God for the way that they're doing things just because the, the Lord does not take your gift away doesn't mean that you're not under judgment in some way so that's that those are the reasons why I walked away from the Prophet Lovi's ministry I, I was yeah there were issues yeah that, that's just kind of what I'm getting at um and he is a little bit too fluffy in terms of dealing with spades like he doesn't want to call them spades he calls them shovels he calls them spoons and forks and for me it's like be stern we are in these days where things are, are rough so speak well and likely if the dude actually honored God with his gift he might find himself prophesying not so much over just individual people in their lives uh showing them what it is that is the darkness that is following them he might actually end up prophesying over nations he likes to compare himself again blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the kingdom of god there is no meekness in comparing yourself to the prophet samuel but he likes to say that he is not like these modern day prophets that are up and down charlatans he is more like the prophet samuel god says if you put yourself at the uppermost part of the banquet seat you will be removed but put yourself and then when the master calls you to sit next to him you will sit next to him so uh let people uh, let the uh, validate you as samuel do not call yourself samuel you know what i mean so he he's he's just got issues that kind of make me uneasy but i don't doubt that he's got gifts uh, as for him being a diviner i can't confirm that either but one thing that i know for a fact is that people who tend to get called into the occult to do things like divination spiritist and whatnot they have a natural spiritual gift from god of prophecy they just decided to use it for satan so whether or not he is taking these gifts from the kingdom of darkness is irrelevant bottom line is god has given him a real gift uh and he's not so much using it against the kingdom of god but he's not using it rightly and that's just my thing with with prophet alovi i don't care whether or not he's getting powers from nana Kwaku. i don't even think he is but just in case he is people like those tend to have original gifts from god they just were identified by satan to work for him precisely because they had those gifts so nana Kwaku na himself if he was a christian he'd be probably a very prolific prophet um type establishment thing but anyway that is what it is that uh I, I was trying to highlight that if at all somebody you have identified because you're Berean, you're scholastic you're studying you have identified them as worth your while to listen to uh support them and also respect them because respect is very hard to come by in christianity um because people persecute you the world hates disciples otherwise you might find yourself found wanting in the sense that you will start out being 
among the crowds that Jesus Christ fed, among the 4,000 and the 5,000 that got to eat a free meal when like a fish liberato, uh, next thing, next thing you like are unappreciative or whatever, and you are saying crucify him, crucify him. I am presently being pursued like that on social media, unfortunately, by people that started out following me, supporting me, and I'm in South Africa where there's a lot of witchcraft in operation that causes people to go drowsy under witchcraft spells, right? Um, people started loving me, following me, because people are interested in the word of God, and then they go around and pear shaped on me and they persecute me they put me on a cross they nail me to it and i'm like oh, how long must i keep on taking up my cross following christ like yes daily that's what god says but how long must i be persecuted for am i going to end up martyred like i literally sometimes believe i'm going to end up martyred or just left for dead in jay unless the good samaritan rocks up i don't know but i just have this thing it's a trend and it's like disgusting because i understand it to be the work of the occult the occult cannot work successfully in you in your heart unless you are taken by every wind of doctrine remember that example that i used with that guy what with the mummy she with keys in his hand with sorry all different kinds of um religious uh totems uh, uh, like dangling at his neck uh if if you are not truly filled by the holy spirit of god and you're taken by all the myriads of gods the plethora of deities in this like polytheistic nation that is south africa um you are going to be intrigued by what a christian says initially because you know you can relate uh and then you might end up turning around and persecuting her or him you might find out turning around and being like crucify her crucify her because the things she's speaking are blasphemous let's hang her upside down on a cross like peter you might find yourself persecuting the very christian you started out loving you might find yourself un following the very person you initially started out being besotted with the content of because something in you visited you precisely because you were never really truly indwelt by the holy spirit or truly saint judas for instance hung out with jesus for a minute and yet satan entered him because he was never really truly serious about god he was a little bit of a thief do you understand what i'm saying so if at all it is possible for an entity to lodge in you and cause a hostility in you against a person that has not had it coming like you cannot write them off because you have divided based on you checking out the word of god there's something about them. It's really because I man, this is against this particular scripture. This is against this particular passage. How are you gonna just flat out ignore the Bible like that? How are you gonna do that? How are you gonna do, do that? another thing about Prophet Lovi, the whole tongues thing in a public congregation? How are you gonna just ignore the Bible like that? You can't do that. I don't disbelieve in gifts of tongues, but but I do know that there is order in the church when it comes to them. So you don't just get to be like ba ba da dam bim or whatever, like you know, in a public congregation without people understanding what is being said. And especially for somebody that is a deliverance minister, that there in lies the power cut south africa do you um especially for somebody that calls yourself a deliverance minister it is dangerous to do that because we all know from the kingdom of darkness and people who have come out of there that there are there are tongues of of devils like fake tongues so that's one of the biggest reasons why i believe we should just honor the lord's word in the book in, in is it first or second corinthians where it is written that stop with these tongues like stop with these tongues where it's a ba ba ta 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 nobody understands what you're saying you very well might just be antagonizing true christians Christian tongues with demonic tongues in there without any understanding. If somebody rocks up in a church and is like, in, in the name of the Satan, I, I hope that Christ suffocates and they are saying that in a church but in tongues that is wickedness that is a an incantation right there in the church it needs to be squelched and you will probably pounce on them like a beast on some far be it from us get uh the behind us satan mara you won't know if a person is saying hail satan you know in tongues so that's why it's just not okay to just blurt out tongues because you don't know who in the congregation is actually a satanist a witch or indwelt by bad spirits that could be counteracting biblical christian godly spirit-filled prayer so that's why we shouldn't just blurt out into tongues alongside the fact that it just makes everybody look insane and incoherent and it disorderly wah 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 etc blah blah moving on but yeah that whole uh thing then with uh rightly dividing the uh, the word of truth should enable you to gauge in your own heart if your hostility that you are developing inwardly against a christian is like moved by demons or if you are rightly just walking away from somebody because i am with the scriptures if your decision to walk away from a believer is not inspired by the veracity of god's word you are being unnecessarily hostile on that day and watch yourself because you might just be like Judas. Satan has entered you and caused you to betray the Son of Man. Next part.